So I have a message that it's not an easy message to relay. It's not something I was excited about when God told me to put it on. Um, you know, I just started this channel and I didn't even know where it was going to go, uh, what God was doing. I just knew I wanted to encourage people and it was a calling I've had forever, you know, for a long, long time. And, you know, I've dabbled in it now and now and again, but this is... Uh, probably the most important message that I've ever, ever recorded. And it happened today. I received a, I'd say a vision. People call it download from God, from the Holy Spirit. Um, pretty important one. It filled me with a lot of emotion but more than anything, urgency, urgency, and knowing that I need to be obedient to him, I am sending this message out. I saw today on a message I was watching earlier, it just had some words on the screen and, um, some music, you know, in a pretty background. It was just said something about people hurting you and turning on you and how it's, it's strengthens us and how we come through and God's, you know, always turns it out good for us and makes it right. Anyway, it, it made me think of this first scripture, you know, it just came out of me. You know how the Holy Spirit will bring up scripture. And I remember when the Bible talks about in the end, how mother, well, Jesus said, mother will turn against daughter, daughter will turn against mother, you know, son against mother, mother against son, you know, I, I mean, it's just, uh, friends will, will turn on each other. Best friends will turn on each other, you know, family members against each other. It's a dividing, it's a division, right? Oh, okay. So, I was thinking of the scripture and that's when the download happened. That's when the vision happened. And believe me, about 30 or 40 scriptures came to my mind all at one time. And it's a very hard thing to explain. Um, I've never had to explain something like this before. I've never been asked to share a download before like that. And it's not easy to explain, even though some people make it look easy, it's not. Um, I'll just try my best. So there's a dividing happening um, when Jesus talks about the wheat and the tares, how we're all growing together, and there's an angel with the sickle. And the angel with the sickle is 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 the gathering of the, let's say the believers and the non-believers okay the evil and the good <laughs> the righteous and the wicked okay you can say it however you want to say it um the devil's kids and jesus's kids okay um but <laughs> this is the, the deal it's time okay very serious message um showed me another scripture where it says he stands at the door and knocks. And if anyone opens the door, that him and his father will come in and, and eat with them, share the, their lives with them. So he told me he's not just standing at the door anymore waiting. Because that waiting period, the standing that he's talking about, he showed me that that was the waiting period. You know, in the Bible where it says that people were asking, well, where's your God? You know, you keep saying he's coming. Where is he? Where is he? He's not here because they don't believe and they don't want to believe. Kind of mocking people, you know. <laughs> and the Bible says that God is patient and he's waiting because he doesn't want anyone to perish. Because that's the kind of God we serve, you know. Awesome. And he's very compassionate and merciful, you know. He won't let... Um, he won't let one soul go without hearing the gospel, okay? Not one. You know, people say, oh, well, there's a tribe in so-and-so in the remote area over here in this part of the world. 
that hasn't heard the gospel yet, so the end isn't coming, because that has to happen first. Yes, it does have, have, have to happen first. You're right. Every single person is going to be given the gospel message. I mean, it's going to happen. But how do you know they haven't been preached to already? Jesus, when he was in the tomb for those three days, he actually visited some people in spirit prison, the ones that died during the flood, that didn't hear the message, you know, that didn't get to hear the gospel. So <laughs> what makes you think he won't go to a, a remote area anywhere in this world and not preach to him? If, if we can't get to him, he will. You know what I mean? Oh, we couldn't go preach to the people in spirit prison. You know, only he could. Okay, and they had a choice. It doesn't say how many were, you believed the gospel and, and, and followed Jesus and, and believed it. It doesn't say that. However, it, the point is, we don't know how many people have not heard the gospel and how many have. And that's the reality of it. So we can't bank on that, you know, oh, well, we've got to wait till every single person hears it. Okay, because I'm telling you, Jesus himself talks about the signs of the coming, right? He gives us all the signs, all right? He even says, you know, you can tell, you know, when it's time to harvest, when it's time to plant, when, it, you know, by the, by the sky, the color of the sky, you know, farmers, and they're like the farmer's almanac, you know, they, they, they know it all. I mean, you could actually really read and time it out perfectly. And he's saying, you can, you can tell that. Why can't you, why can't you see the signs that I'm giving you, that I'm plainly telling you, you know, what's going on. So I'm, I'm thinking, I'm looking at the signs that he gave, you know, and absolutely all of them, except for one, maybe two have happened. Okay. And has been happening for a very long time, but those one or two can happen in a second. It could happen right now. Okay. So the standing at the door that I'm talking about, he showed me that that's why he's been standing and that's why he used the word standing. But he also showed me this, okay? That he's not only standing at the door, but his hand is on the doorknob, okay? His hand, his hand is on the doorknob. He's not just standing at the door anymore, knocking. He's not just knocking. He has placed his hand on the doorknob. You know that Paul said that they were in the, we were in our last, the last hours before Jesus' return. And that was 2,000 years ago when he said that. I believe Paul knew what he was talking about. He had already seen some signs, evidently, to call it the last hour. Now, just being logical, if that was the last hour, 2,000 years ago, then that kind of means like we're in the last milliseconds, you know, milliseconds. <laughs> it's, it's a hard message to relay in the way that gives it justice in what God showed me. I'm not the best speaker. I don't claim to be, <laughs> but I, I just want you to get the message, okay? There's a dividing going on. The Bible talks about the, sh the earth being shaken one last time, you know, the separation. Um, Jesus talks about, you know, when he comes back, he divides the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. And the ones on his right are the good ones, the ones that, you know, followed him. He says to the ones on the right, he says, thank you for feeding me when I was hungry, giving me something to drink when I was thirsty, clothing me when I was naked, visiting me while I was in prison, taking care of me while I was sick. And they they said, "Well, Jesus, we didn't we didn't see you when you were sick or in prison or hungry or naked. 
And he said, no, but you did these. And every time you've done that for somebody, you're doing it for me. And, and then he enters them into the kingdom and says, well done, good and faithful servant. Okay, so on the left, the goats, he calls them. <clears throat> he says, where were you when I was hungry and I needed fed? Why didn't you give me something to drink when I was thirsty or visit me in prison or clothe me when I was naked or take care of me when I was sick? And again, they kind of said the same thing the sheep did. They said, we never saw you naked or hungry or thirsty. And he said, yes, but the, you didn't do it for them. Then you've done it, haven't done it for me. Go off into everlasting punishment. Depart from me, workers of iniquity. That's hardcore, okay? That's, that's, that's really cut and dry, though, too. You know, I mean, it's, it's the way it really is. And it's happening now. The dividing. The coming out and being separate, like he tells us to do, you know. It's, it's, he says that if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to go lame into heaven than to go with both hands into hell. Okay. If there's a sin that, that is keeping you from going into everlasting life with our Lord, cut it off, <laughs> cut it off, you know? And I, I have a sense of urgency about this. It's not like we got a lot of time any, anymore, you know? And, and it's a scary thought for a lot of people, you know, because people look at revelations and whatnot, but it's, it's revelations. Yeah, it talks about it, of course. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, John, 1 John, they talk about the Lord's coming. And it's in very simple terms and it's very black and white, you know, easy to understand, not hard, not complicated. You don't need to decipher it. You know, <laughs> he's coming in the clouds. Okay. He's coming in the clouds with his angels, sound of a trumpet. Okay. It's, it's. The tribulation, what Jesus talks about, you know, um, doesn't last very long because of us, because he doesn't want us to perish or suffer too much. Okay. Um, the Bible or the Jesus also showed me in the Bible where it, where he talks about, you know, flee to Judea, um, hope that it's not winter when it's, when he comes, um, There'll be two people laying in bed together. One will be gone. One will stay. There'll be two people working together. One will be left behind. The other one won't. Will be. Will go. Okay. <laughs> Fleeing. Separate yourselves. Come out from among them and be separate. Flee. Flee from a sinful life. Flee from the people that are not good for you. Okay flee into living righteously. Okay? Just flee. <laughs> the separation is what he's talking about when he says one will be taken, the other will not. Okay, so that is the dividing that's happening right now. Okay. Yes, the rapture will happen. Yes, we will be caught up in the sky to, to meet the Lord, of course. But he showed me a different layer to that verse, those verses, that made a lot of sense to me right now in, the, in what's going on right now. Now, this isn't supposed to be some doomsday, doom and gloom message. No. We're supposed to be happy about this, you know? Glad. I'm sorry, I'm shaking a little bit. It's cold. Um, but we're supposed to be looking forward to this day, looking forward to his coming. 
that brings me to my point of being vigilant and being ready, being sober and aware and doing what we're supposed to be doing before the master comes back. You know, you know the parable that Jesus said about, you know, the master that leaves on a trip and his servants, instead of just doing what they were supposed to do, they just went off and did, did things like beat each other up, and went and, you know, drank and whatever, and did all this horrible stuff. And before they knew it, I mean, they didn't know when to expect the master, but all of a sudden he comes in and he sees this, you know, it's, it's not good. It's not good to be found like that. You know, I've always been thankful when I've been in the darkness and came out and went, thank God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for patiently waiting at that door for me to come out of this, this sin. I know that uh, when he comes back, the state that we're in when he comes back is our final state. Revelations says, those who are filthy still will be filthy. Those who are righteous will be righteous still. Okay, so we need to wear the cloak of righteousness, and that is our Savior, our redemption, our Redeemer is coming, okay? We know we've been saved by the blood of Jesus. We know that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whoever, whoever believes on him shall have everlasting life and not perish, okay? God doesn't want anyone to perish. That's why he waited but he's not going to wait forever. He's not waiting forever. We know that too. We know that too. And the devil knows that too. So as it gets closer to that time, as we know, the Bible says that Satan knows his time is short. So he's trying his hardest. Um, he roams around as a lion seeking whom he should devour. You know, temptations come, but Jesus said he would give us a way out of every single one. Okay? We need, from here on out, we need to do our best and find that out every temptation we get. Okay? We need to pull every thought in obedience with Christ. We need to capture those thoughts before they become anything more because we know how sin develops okay it starts with a thought because of our desires our evil desires we have in our heart our heart is evil <laughs> you know we're born that way sorry to say but we are that's why we need a savior um but if we entertain that thought it turns into a desire to a behavior to a lifestyle which is a habit, but it leads to death, okay? And we don't want that, <laughs> okay? We know there's the first death and the second death. The second death is when people are, the people that haven't believed in Jesus Christ, and the devil and his angels and hell and death will be swallowed up. Okay. But we will not experience the second death because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Okay. So that's good news. <sighs> but we need to be careful about what we're doing right now. Okay. Don't get tired of doing good all right because in due season he will lift you up okay he'll give you the energy and the strength keep on going keep on doing good while we're waiting for our master to come back which i believe his hand is on the doorknob let's just do what god has called us to do you know let's just do whatever god called us to do in this moment you know we all have different gifts. We're the body of Christ. You know, we all have our, our different gifts. And it's cool like that. You know, we're, <laughs> we all have different functions and we're all special and unique that way. And it's pretty cool. 
God is amazing, isn't he? The greatest designer in the world. <laughs> so I know I'm trying to make light of this, but it's a very solemn, serious subject, okay? It's not all butterflies and rainbows, you know? It's not all cupcakes and cheesecake and chocolate. <laughs> no, there's meat and potatoes. We got to. There's liver. We got to swallow down, okay? Ooh. But we have to. It's good for us. We need it. You know? Iron. And iron sharpens iron. That's why we communicate with each other. There's a creator. His name is Gavin Dees. And he is has his own channel. I watch him all the time. He said something which didn't even really caused me to be on alert when he said it but now I can see he's a hundred percent correct let me tell you what he said he said well he says a lot of things but this thing in particular he said we need to cry out in the wilderness to make way for the Lord okay do you remember John the Baptist is the one that cried out in the wilderness to prepare a way for Jesus when he came into this world and started his ministry after he baptized him. <laughs> yeah, the kingdom of God is at hand. Okay. That's what's happening now. Okay. <laughs> we are preparing a way. We are the ones crying out in the wilderness. Okay. Saying, make way for the Lord. He's coming quick. All right. He's coming quickly. Very quickly. Very There's a parable about the 10 virgins. Okay, so there's 10 virgins. They are staying up waiting for the bridegroom to come and they have lamps with oil. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. The five were, that were wise had extra oil to put in their lamps in case their master or the bridegroom took too long. The foolish ones didn't okay for whatever the reason they didn't I could think of reasons why they didn't but that's all speculation um, but they ran out of oil it got dark and their lamps weren't shining so they went up to the wise virgins and said give us some of your oil ours burn out and the wise virgin said I'm sorry we only have enough for ourselves. Go and buy some for yourself. So they go off to go buy some. But while they were gone, that's when the bridegroom came. Okay. The bridegroom came while the other ones were off trying to buy the oil. When they came back, they were already in the, all the, the wise virgins and the bride groom was already in, you know, with the door shut. And when the foolish virgins went up there to knock on the door, the bride's groom, I do not know you. So they left empty handed. It's a lesson for us. Okay. To be prepared, to not be foolish. To redeem the times because the times are evil. You know, like what the Bible says to do. You know, we have a, a an enemy out there who doesn't want us to see the new Jerusalem or enter the new Jerusalem that's going to come down after the Lord ar arrives. Um, it's... We pray for the people that haven't accepted Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I just come to you today and anybody that has not heard how wonderful you are and have not seen through another Christian how wonderful you are. I ask that you give them that opportunity, Lord. All the people hidden away where you know where they're at, we may not see them, but you do. You see them. They can't hide from you. 
<laughs> you're a pursuer, a very passionate pursuer of your children. Lord, go find them, bring them into the fold. You know, let them be caught up with us to meet you. Sweep us up there with you, Lord, as the shaft is burned. Father God, I know you're coming soon, Lord. And I'm happy. Lord, I'm happy you're coming soon. This is a day we've all been waiting for as you're coming, Lord. It's what we all talk about. That's, that's what we all look forward to, the promised land, you know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So when we, when we see the new Jerusalem coming down from the sky and we're able to walk into it, you know, you know that it's gated up and nobody who's evil could get in. All the dogs are outside the gates, not allowed to come in. Peace like you've never known before. You'll be in the presence of love itself, God. Jesus Christ is a light. And I think the people that are left behind, that experience the second death, I think God, he may erase our memory and the reason I say that is because there are no tears in heaven. He wipes every tear away. And um, there's no pain in heaven. So however he does it, I know that we will not be crying for them. But everyone has their chance, okay? Everyone has an equal chance to this. The very last chapter of Revelations. It says this. Actually, it's the last page of the Bible. It says the bridegroom says, come. The bride says, come. Anyone who thirsts, he gives water to them freely. Which means salvation is still free. Salvation is still available to every single person who thirsts for it, who wants it. We have, I'm sure you have spoken about Jesus. Maybe you even led somebody into a prayer of salvation, you know. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's turn from our sins. Let's repent and turn. And be the light of this world and the salt of the earth like Jesus wants us to be. When he says, when he comes, you know, don't go back to your house to grab any belongings when you flee, right? Let's let go of all our earthly attachments. I'm talking material things, not our love for people, okay? Everything that doesn't serve us anymore or serve God, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you guys all have a different thing, you know? I'll tell you what, after God downloaded this to me today, after he was telling me about this today, I literally, almost packed a bag because <laughs> he's coming that soon but then I remember don't pack a bag I don't need a bag where we're going you know he says he goes and prepares a place for us in his father's mansion there are many rooms and that's what the bridegroom does and he will come back and get us and we need to make sure the bride is ready and we're part of the bride. We're part of the church. The church is the bride. So that's what I'm attempting to do right now. Church. Bride. Keep waiting. 
eagerly watching and ready because his hand is on the doorknob, okay? Okay, it's getting dark out here. I don't have that good of a phone. I'm sure I have a light on here somewhere, but I didn't turn it on. Anyway, have a good night. Have a good weekend. It is Friday the 15th of March, 2024. May God bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you. You and your family and your household. Hey, just like the Passover, the angel of death couldn't touch any of the people inside the houses that had the blood on the top and the sides of the doorposts. The top and the sides of the doorpost. We've got the blood of Jesus. The angel of death will not be able to touch us. Keep the faith. Keep being the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And following Jesus, being his hands and feet, spreading the gospel, planting the seeds, watering them. Being fellow harvesters with them. He said, the fields are ready. Where are the harvesters? The laborers, you know, where are they? We're right here, Jesus. Right here. Okay, think about what I said. Don't let it make you anxious. I pray that God gives you peace about all this, but also the urgency of it, okay? I love you. I love all you guys. Bye.